You've seen him everywhere from Fox and Friends to YouTube. If he's still allowed on YouTube, we'll probably talk about that. <laughs> right now he's on tour, the Star Spangled Banter Tour. Chad Prather, back in Lubbock. Welcome back. Thanks, man. It's good to be here. Good to be on with you, too. It's the Chad and Chad show. Right yeah, now. I like it. I dig it. I uh, I like getting in. I blew into Lubbock literally yesterday. I mean, it was the. I know this is nothing for you guys. Y'all yeah, are this used is to breezy. It. I always forget that I have allergies till I come up here and the wind starts blowing and I get all the ragweed and stuff. So I just, I just took a little allergy pill and I'm a new man. Good. New well, man. you can breathe. You can breathe now. Yeah, I know. But no, I love coming up to Lubbock. I've got some great friends, great fans uh, here in town, and we had an incredible sold out show last night at the Cactus and and just had a blast. And we're just going to do it all the way through the weekend. Yeah, you've got uh, uh, what three more, two more shows coming? We're going to do three more. We yeah. got we got one tonight. We we um, we added one Sunday night, and then we knew that the Cactus already had a show planned uh, for the early time of the evening on Saturday night. And finally they just said, why don't we just do a late show? And I said, well, it's St. Patrick's Day. Why not? Let's just have a party. Yeah. So we're planning on, I don't have any idea what I'm going to do, but <laughs> I'm planning on tomorrow night's show being completely different somehow. We'll figure it out. I Who knows? I, 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 I sometimes surprise myself with the garbage that comes out of my mouth. I just I have no idea where this stuff comes from. You know, I do all the rants in the truck and the videos and things like that. And you're right. I've I've um, I've been in all these places. YouTube has me on a wanted poster now. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, and and I do want to talk about that because you know I, I think where people initially heard of you and saw your videos was yeah. was on YouTube and they're in and, Facebook, and social yeah. media. Yeah, and now you've got social media, which is to me it looks lashing out at either if you're you know any conservative, conservative politics voice. conservative humor conservative yeah. whatever they're they're kind of pinging people any conservative voice in fact i read an interesting article article uh this morning that showed an actual graph and the statistics of the drop in viewership or or at least the traffic that's being driven to anything conservative any sites you know such as my own that's being conservative voices versus there's been an increase in traffic uh, there's been so there's about a 13 or 14 percent drop if you're a conservative site in traffic, and there's been about a four to five percent increase if it is a left leaning um, site. So yeah. you know my my website, my blog site, politicalcowboy.com. When we first launched that thing last July, we were seeing about three to four million people visit that site every month. And I mean, the numbers fell off so drastically with that. It's just absolutely astounding. You know, there there are, there are folks out there who are losing their jobs over it because mm -hmm. that's you know those those sites are what they do. You know, and they're having to lay people off. It's been a bad deal. Yeah. So 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 I'm one of those guys. Knock on wood. I am one of those guys who fortunately have played the game. I think right. YouTube has never given me any strikes. They've never put anything against me. They haven't pulled my channel down or anything like that. Um, and I. It's weird. I, you know, I see here some folks who just really do things that aren't that big of a deal, and they either get you know banned for thirty days or, as they say, Facebook jail for thirty days. Yeah. I, I'd be in trouble if they did that because I mean, so much of what I do is driven through Facebook. Yeah, well, and and that's you know, and and that's where you would think for YouTube and and any social media site if yeah. they have any kind of draw whatsoever. Why why even spike it? Uh, you yeah. know, I know what the, you know. You may have an agenda here and there, but. You know, let, let people decide on their own. Let people decide on their own what they want to hear. It's you, it's social media. It's yeah, you would art. think. And I, I jokingly say I love and hate Mark Zuckerberg. I want to punch and kiss him on the mouth. And, and so, you know, because it's like it's, it's in one sense he gave me this incredible boost to my career because it's this platform that I was able to grow using something that he created. But then it is there is an, a level of censorship there that's going on that is very arbitrary. They determine what others should be seeing and that's not fair if you want to see it you should see it it yeah. you know it's not up to the you know the the social media gods to be able to determine what you're interested in and so i don't i don't like that sort of thing and so there's a lot of a lot of talk out there you know i'm i'm connected with a lot of these web editors bloggers writers you know there's a back and forth amongst all of these folks who are really some big name folks in that world and there's a, there's a lot of frustration Mm -hmm. because of this. Um, and, you know, my thing is I, I'm not a news person. I'm certainly not a journalist. But I like to take what I see as truth and and wrap it in humor, 
making it a little bit easier pill to swallow. So I do a lot of satire. I do a lot of comedy. I do a lot of humor and, and, and poke fun at it a little bit. And sometimes it's even self-effacing and, and self-deprecating. And I don't know. I, I think maybe I've managed to skirt around some of those things because I'm not so serious all the time with the topics I'm addressing. Uh, I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. I, it's, it's a weird world we live in. The 21st century is an, an interesting, it's an exciting, it's an interesting world we live in because we have these platforms given to us that have never been available before. These, these modes of communication that, that give us the opportunity to really put our voice out there in a big way. And I'll say this. I'll bore you with this little story here. I've always said, you know, historically speaking, the only voices that were ever saved for posterity were your poets and your philosophers and your, and your big writers, you know, your Socrates, Plato, Aristotle's, these guys. You're, it's so now everybody has a voice. And historically, people... And they always put their, their words on a wall, whether it was hieroglyphics or cave drawings or all of these things. Now we're putting it on a digital wall. It's there forever, and everybody has that voice and that ability to put it up there. The problem is not everybody has and takes responsibility right. for the words they're putting on the wall. And so it's all this stuff that's being put out there. So social media has created this wild monster for all of us that that we kind of need to rein it in and tame it a little bit because I think if we don't, it is just going to continue to create more division. And, what, and we see a lot of that yeah. in the country. And, and it's not that we haven't always had that division. We have since the founding of the country, and that division has been healthy in a lot of ways. But it's getting to a point of, of being detrimental if we don't understand. Well, now it's it's a lot easier to, if, if you're on Twitter, if you're on Facebook, to only follow those voices that yeah. you agree with and that you only want to listen to. And, and so you think that worldview or that view that you have is the only view that's out there and the only view <laughs> yeah. that you believe is right. And we see that on college campuses where yeah. kids can't handle I mean, if you were to show up to, you know, yeah, college I campus, know. Ben Shapiro, other concerns, you know, show up to on a college yeah. campus. These these kids can't handle it. They yeah. can't handle just hearing no, an alternative like it. opinion. It absolutely, uh, and I, and I I hate the word trigger, but it does. It triggers, you know. And and it's a, uh, um, you know, I'm going. I'll be at SMU Thursday night. Uh, Stephen Crowder is going to be speaking to a group there at SMU in Dallas, and about two thousand people will show up for that. And they've done everything they can to try to keep him off, you know, which makes off, is, which makes no absolutely no sense. Yeah. I mean, Stephen's a He's a comedian as well. He's he's a lot like me in that regard. People know him for his political conservative uh, viewpoints, but you know he's a funny guy. And so they go out there and and uh, I mean you know the guy's harmless in that regard. Yeah. You know he's he's a kind, loving, got a big heart. But here's the thing, and I, and I try to remind people that. A healthy bird has two wings, a left and a right. You don't have one big right wing. It'd just be flying in circles and not getting anywhere. You've got to have two healthy sides. You really do. And the issue is we don't we don't like the other side. And it's okay because people see patriotism different than you do. It doesn't mean their their viewpoint of patriotism is wrong, although if that's all you've ever heard, you think that it is it, you vilis, you vilified it to the point where, oh, you know, now I've got to lash out and fight back and defend my side. You know, take a deep breath and remember we all do bleed red, white, and blue if we're in this country. We all love this country. We just have different ways of interpreting it. And uh, it's it's an interesting thing. I, I think we can correct falsehood in love. That's a big thing that we've lost. We don't know how to act compassionately and communicate. And another thing, when you get online, it's like getting a text message. You ever had your you know your wife gets mad at you like, what did you mean by that text message? Well, I was just answering your question. Yeah, <laughs> because she read emotion into it. Right. And so that's what we do online as well. We think that we we interpret meaning based on the emotion we read and how somebody communicated a, something that they typed. And so it makes it harder and harder for us to understand and, and, and to get along. But, yeah, you know, I, I, I love and hate it. Yeah. You know, I love and hate it. It's an incredible yeah. platform, but you've got to be careful with it. Yeah, absolutely. Chad Prather, uh, this weekend at the, the Cactus Theater, you can uh, purchase tickets online at cactustheater.com. And uh, it's the Star Spangled Banter Tour. And audience is 18 and up. So you yeah. know it's going to be it's yeah. going to be good. Well, we have fun. You know, it's a, it's not a we don't we don't get vulgar or crazy, but we do. It's a lot of laughs. You know, it's a yeah. comedy show. People always want to know because I do so much political commentary. They want to know is it a political show? It's not. It's an American show. It's a thing that Americans can relate to. You know, this, we do things in this country that are just absolutely oddball that the rest of the world just. 
looks at us and, you know, it's funny. But we we think of it as normal. I mean, you know, go to the Waffle House and trust me, you see America all over the place. Only in Waffle House will you go sit in a booth with it's covered in a, in a film of grease. And I love Waffle House, don't get me wrong, but you're absolutely four foot and a swinging door away from the bathrooms. Where you, they did not, they've never planned Waffle Houses around the bathroom. That is not part of the architectural plan. You know, and I mean, you're literally, there's a hole in the ground that people are in there three o'clock in the morning, both using and vomiting in, and we're eating our, you know, scatter smothered, covered, pepper chunked and chopped, all sitting right there. Sounds the, delicious. It, isn't it great? It's so good. Now I'm hungry. <laughs> yeah. I don't, now I'm hungry. we got to take the break. When we come back, uh, Chad Prather's going to hang out with us for one more segment. The Star Spangled Banter Tour in Lubbock this weekend at the Cactus Theater. Chad H.T. Show, KFYO. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Chad H.T. Show. News Talk, 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. The Star Spangled Banter Tour here in Lubbock. This weekend at the Cactus Theater, you can get tickets online. Chad Prather in studio. And uh, again, a couple of more shows coming up Saturday night. Uh, at 10.30 p.m., that's going to be the fun show. That's the show you need. We're going to let it all hang out. Yeah, that's the show you got to go out to, 10.30 at night, Sunday. Tickets still available, uh, again, at the Cactus Theater, 7 p.m. show uh, at the Cactus Theater. So so you're, you're traveling around doing this doing this tour, mm-hmm. and you get to talk to a whole bunch of different audiences, and hear, I'm, I'm sure you get to hear from a lot of different people. Yeah. How do, how do they feel we're doing right now? This how do, you know what's the mood like? Well, for people? Uh, you know, people are fired up. They really are. I did a I did an interview with the Washington Post, which is they, they, you know they're so far opposite where I stand in the world of politics and interpreting America. It's crazy. But they called me up. They wanted to do and they wanted to know are people tired of things like political comedy? I said, some are. Some, some are and some are not. I said, conservatives, by and large, are, are begging. They're starving for it because they do not have anyone with a voice on a platform that, that gives them their viewpoint, that puts it out there. And so what I have is I have a lot of folks who come to these shows, and they love the fact that it's, that it's values-driven – uh, real talk, honest, genuine, but from their perspective, how middle red state America looks at, you know, interprets the world around yeah. us. So they're they're getting a kick out of it. They're having fun. I have a lot of folks who come and they're like, we wish you would do more political comedy. But I, I'm like, you know, you can watch late night TV or Saturday Night Live. You get plenty of that stuff. Let's let's talk about American stuff. And so that's that's where the comedy comes from. But they're eating it up. They're loving it. And, and I think people are excited about the direction the country is headed it, by and large. Although we're taking some very unorthodox ways of getting there, right. you know, Donald Trump's making sure of that, and um, he, he, you know, President Trump is like a laser pointer to the cats. You know, he just <laughs> slings a tweet out there, and they're just chasing it. They're all over the place, and he gives his speeches, and I'm like, oh, he ought not should have said that, but he says it, and he doesn't care, and it's okay. But it, uh, you know, one hand's up here in the air waving while the other hand's getting some things done and he's getting some things done. So by and large, I think people are, they're, they're excited about the direction of the country. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you bring up political comedy, it used to be comedy, right. you know, the, the, the politics used to be, but you look at people like Stephen Colbert mm-hmm. and, and, and even he's changed to more of this. It's a, it's a hatred. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a hatred of, of the president. And yeah. then also you take that and it's a hatred of conservatives. Yeah. And, you know, that's how it comes across. And that's, why would people want to watch that? You know, who, who were well, you feel beat who up were on. conservatives? You know, you wouldn't want to watch that. Yeah, you feel you feel bullied at the end of the day, and and you and again, you don't have the opportunity to speak back to it. So, it's it's an interesting phenomenon. We, we because again, everybody is been, being made out to be a villain in some ways, and then you get on there and say, "Well, what? We're not we're not making you guys villains." Uh, yeah, you should read my inbox. Yeah, <laughs> I get some interesting stuff day in and day out. But you put it out there and, and let, let the chips fall where they may. And, and I know that, uh, you know, I, I look back at guys like, you know, way back, like Will Rogers, who obviously was a humorist. I admire the man. He was a Democrat who made fun of Democrats. And, you know, he, he made fun of politics and he did that. But he did it in a way that, and, I'm, you know, he made a lot of folks mad in his day with his comments. But he was, it was, again, a lot of it was self effacing. You yeah. know, said, hey, let's, 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 point at ourselves first yeah. you know for every finger i'm pointing at you i got three pointing back at me and so 
you know, let's make let's look at our own flaws, and then we can we can all laugh at it together. Any other inspirations uh, as far as you know your comedy and, and how you built that? Did you or anyone you look back on and go, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I'm, I've always been a fan of, of comedians and and smart comedians, you know, and and guys and it, it, folks who you might look at it and say, well, you know, uh, that might not have been my taste because comedy is so subjective. But I look back at guys like a, a, a George Carlin or Robin Williams or Bill Cosby. And these people who say, well, you might not agree with them politically, but boy, you love the way their brain worked yeah. on these things, the way they could spit these things out or improv or rant on these things. So I grew up watching all the comics that my mother didn't want me to watch. And so I, and I, and then of those course, were the best. Those were the fun, they, you know, late night HBO <laughs> and stuff like that. I would watch those specials. And then I kept the remote real close because if my mother ever caught me watching George Carlin, she would have died. But um, it just would have had a, fit but i but i love those guys i loved watching the way their brain works and i think my brain sort of works that same way we're just kind of open free thought and just runs with things and, and sometimes i put my foot in my mouth but that's a lot of fun too yeah i grew up i can remember as a child listening to bill cosby records you know the albums i'd run the needles through albums like wonderfulness and and listening to his style of telling a story and so for me i still don't consider myself a comedian I, i'm more of a storyteller and a humorist and I tell stories that people can relate to and, and you know, give you the, the stuff to laugh at all the way through it. And I think people are doing it. You know, we did it. We did two hours last night. No opener. I did an hour. We took a break for 15 minutes. I came back and did another hour. And that's what folks were asking for. And I'm telling you, it was a, it was really it's a nonstop. I don't know how they do it because I mean, I can't, you can't cry for two hours. How do you laugh for two hours? So and they were doing it. You know, it was, a, it was a loud room. Everything was exciting and fun. And People and, need uh, that, though. They, they need do. that laughter. You need for, that release. I mean, yeah. it's 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 okay to to just take a break, and that's why people say do more politics. And I say, no, let's just laugh. Yeah. Well, maybe we do, maybe we don't, but let's just let's just tell some stories that make you laugh, things that you can relate to, and that's what we've successfully done on this tour, and we've done it all across the country. You know, I've sold out in Seattle, I've sold out in Portland, Oregon. Uh, we just got back from out there, and th these places where you think. There's no way. You know, I had 1,300 people in Modesto, California back in mid-January, and it was a packed, sold-out place at the Performing Arts Center. And I'm like, there's no way I'm going to sell out in these liberal to left-leaning, you know, cities. But people are driving in because they're so hungry just to be able to laugh, yeah. you know. It, so it's uh, it's fun. And I and we're, there's, we're going to be doing more of that at the Cactus this weekend. Yeah, very good. It's uh, happening uh, this weekend, Cactus Theater. You can get tickets at cactustheater.com. A couple of more minutes left, and I, I got to ask you, with the, uh, the, the school walkout that happened. Yeah. Any thoughts there? Yeah, I got a lot of thoughts about it. I uh, look. I, I'm all. We would have been in so much trouble. I, I yeah. I would have been bad. You know. I would. I would have cut class, but it, it would have been so I could go out in the field somewhere and shoot my guns. I you know. <laughs> I would have taken target practice out there. We used to get out of. We used to cut class and go down the railroad tracks with our little twenty two rifles and shoot everything we saw. Um, but no, I you know I jokingly said on Twitter yesterday. I said these kids that cut class to to, to you know protest violence. They probably uh, they probably. Take Taping, you know, fights in the hallway and putting them online, yeah, you know, today. Course, so yeah. it, 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 they're high schoolers. I appreciate your First Amendment right. I, I, I don't have to agree with what you're saying or protesting. And I appreciate your, you know, time to do that. But you, if you did that at work, you'd get fired. So yeah. <laughs> you can't well, just walk out on everything. And, and I think that's why it's a it's a great uh, learning, you know, for for some of these school districts that are going to punish right. the kids. It's a great le way to learn that. Yeah, you know what? You, you everyone has a right to protest. Everyone has a right to free speech, yeah. but at the same time, there are consequences sometimes to that. There's consequences. I mean, even you know, and and that's that's the law. I mean, you can you can charge somebody with truancy or you know whatever cutting class and all these things. There's consequences to it, even if it is for a political reason. That doesn't excuse you. Yeah. Uh, the First Amendment comes with consequences. It's a very heavy. That's we go back to what I was saying earlier about having a voice. There's a huge responsibility that comes with having that voice, and folks need to take it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so you you're you're on YouTube. Uh, watch Chad. On YouTube, they can yeah. uh, search you there or just, you know, search Chad Prather. Uh, watch Chad on Twitter as well. Yeah, watch Chad and uh, at Watch Chad. And uh, yeah, you do a search for Chad Prather, you're going to find it, but you can go to, you can go to watchchad.com. Yeah. And they haven't banned you yet. Not yet. Not yet. And knock on wood, they never will. We're going to keep uh, having fun with it. The Star Spangled Banter Tour this weekend at the Cactus Theater. Get your tickets today at cactustheater.com. The next show is tomorrow night, St. Patrick's Day. we got one tonight as well. We got one is tonight. that one sold yeah. out? Uh, not sold out. No, okay, there's, so there's you get still tickets about, for tonight. There's about 20 tickets left. And then you've got uh, tickets tomorrow night, 1030 show. It's going to be the fun one, St. Patrick's Day. Chad Prather, 
great to have you on the show. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me.